From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hi, Johnny. Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment. Hello, Pat. Listen, I have something here I think maybe... Whoa, worth... hold it, boy. I've already packed. Huh? You are? Yep, taking off in about an hour. First plane out I can get. Well, how'd you know? I've been planning it for months. How could you? It only happened last Thursday. Pat. Yeah? I'm going on a vacation far, far away to Vicky? sunny Southern California. Little town of La Jolla. And to help me keep out of sight from such as you, I'm taking along all my skin diving outfit. Bye. Well, wait, Johnny. That's right next door. Ah, uh, to what? The case I want you to handle for us in San Diego. Just change my plans, Pat. I'm going to Florida. No, listen, Johnny. There's enough commission on this case to pay for two vacations. And as long as you're going to be right there in Southern Cal anyway... Uh, look, why don't you drop in on me before you take off? <sighs> okay, sucker. Wh- what? Just talking to myself. I'll see you. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut... Following is an accounting of expenditures incurred during my investigation of the Jolly Roger fraud. Expense account item one, taxi for myself and my vacation luggage to the offices of Universal Adjustment, 436 Parley Street, Hartford, in the hope I could argue both Pat McCracken and myself out of taking on the case. The last two cases I'd handled for Pat had almost cost me my life, and I was beginning to be a bit superstitious about anything he had a hand in. But trying to talk him well, down is like trying to talk know. down your mother-in-law. Maybe your skin diving trick will help you crack the case. But the main thing is you're going to California anyhow. This way you can put your whole vacation on expense account. Pat. And baby, if I know you, you run down the case in about two days, come up with a swindle sheet for a couple of weeks. Pat. To say nothing of the commission I mentioned over the phone. Listen, will you? You see, the Jolly Roger was insured by Southwest Maritime Insurance and Liability for 460 G's. Bert Parker, in their San Diego office, can give you all the dope on it. Bert Parker? Sure, you remember him. Handed you the Molly Kay matter a few months ago. A very profitable case for you, wasn't it? Well, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but now look, I'm not... So you'll clean up on this, too. The Jolly Roger, you know, was one of the finest seagoing yachts on the West Coast. No, I didn't know, but Pat, I'm not going to... Big diesel job, 110 feet long. Floating palace. Probably the most luxurious wooden hull job built since the... Wooden hull? 110-foot diesel job? Yeah. And that, unfortunately, is why she burned to the water line before the weight of her engines carried her down to Davy Jones's locker. Hmm. Total loss, huh? Total. 460000 bucks gone. Ah, that's too bad. Well, Pat, it was nice seeing you again. Now I got to get my plane to New York to get my plane for the coast. But I haven't even told you why we want you to look in on this thing, Pat. Pat, I am going to the coast on a vacation, remember? But I told you, I told Bert that you were on your way. You told what? Sure. Phoned him right after I talked to you. Well, you dog. Sure. He's promised to contact the Mexican authorities that you may need to help you and have Mexican. everything all... How are they involved? Oh, now, look, Pat, enough of this. I got to get away. Sure, over. my car's right downstairs, and I can tell you the rest, I know. No, away. no, no, tell it to somebody else. I'm going out there John, on a vacation. baby, you can't let me down on this one. Look, we haven't got any regular man out there, only a couple of part-timers like Bert Parker. You know, sell the policies with one hand and act as adjusters with the other. I got to go. Sure. You see, uh, here, I'll take that back. And this one... You see, that works out all right on small accounts, but on these big ones... Wow, what do you got in here? A case of scotch? Pat, will you shut up a minute and let me tell you... Not on your life. That'd give you a chance to change your mind about taking on the... Here, here's the elevator. Oh, excuse me, lady. Sorry. Now, I still haven't told you why we smell something wrong in this whole case. It's simply and clearly this, John Boy. Yeah, it's simply and clearly this. The diesel yacht Jolly Roger was owned by one Paula Zaganian, ex-rum runner, ex-gun runner, ex-shipping magnate, suspected spy through two world wars, and generally undesirable character, despite the millions he'd made. During the last war, he cleaned up by scaring some of the smaller countries into buying a lot of obsolete military equipment that was hardly fit for the scrap pile. And in more than one place around the world, there was anything but a welcome mat waiting for him. And in a lot of places, a lot of countries, the minute he'd land his seagoing palace, the gendarmes would stick to him like flies to a molasses barrel just to make sure he behaved himself. 
Anyhow, trying to argue with Pat was useless, so I agreed to take on the case. Expense account items two, three, and four. One hundred ninety dollars four cents. Plane fares and incidentals. Hartford to New York. New York to Los Angeles. L.A. to San Diego. Where I hoped to grab a cab to La Jolla before Bert Parker could find out I'd arrived. But I was met at the airport, but not by Bert Parker. Mr. Dollar. Uh, yeah. I thought you were by the description. Well, don't tell me they've got me on those wanted posters out here too. Oh, silly. I'm Jan Penny, in Mr. Parker's office. You know, Southwest Insurance and Liability. Mm, maybe I ought to take the case after all. I'm going to work with you on it. Oh, now I'm sure I will. You see, Mr. Parker's in the hospital. When he received Mr. McCracken's wire about your time of arrival, he asked me to meet you here. Hospital? What's the matter with him? It's supposed to have been an accident. Hit and run. Well, what do you mean, supposed to be? Bert thinks they tried to run him down deliberately. Who? I think he'd better tell you about it. Yeah, I think somebody better. We picked up my luggage, dropped it off at a hotel. I phoned the place I'd made a reservation in La Jolla and told them I might be a day late. And Jan Penny and I went on over to the Queen of Mercy Hospital to talk with Bert Parker. On doctor's orders, I went into his room alone. Bert looked terrible. So, so glad you can make it, Johnny. Hey, you sure you ought to be trying to talk, Bert? Look, why don't we forget I it now? I have to talk. Well, well, I can, Johnny. They tried to kid me, tell me I'll be out of here in a couple of days. <laughs> that line, I saw the chart. Internal, internal bleeding. Hey, Bert. Bert, take it easy, will you? Look, the doc said you have to take it easy. Well, why can't your gal Jan tell me all I need to know on the case? She can't accept this. This getting run down. Yeah, she said she thought it wasn't an accident. She thinks. I know. Yeah? Phone calls. Threatening phone calls. Threatening? About what, Bert? Because. Because of holding up on this claim. Somehow somebody found out I'd. I called Hartford. Asked for investigation. Who? Nagin denies that he. The owner of the Jolly Roger? Uh, yeah. Denies knowing anything about the calls, but they weren't kidding, Johnny. That's why I'm here. Then they probably know I was asked to come out here. Johnny. Yeah? Johnny better go back. Drop this one. Oh, Bert. If they do know, if they know you're here, they may try. May try to... Johnny. Yeah? Hurt. Hurt, Johnny. Nurse. Nurse. Three hours later, while Jan Penny and I paced the corridor, Bert Parker died. The only thing I'd learned from him was that I'd better be careful. Mighty careful. I took Jan Penny to the roughest, toughest dive I could find, Ray Kemper's Cat Club, in the hope we could both drown a sorrow or two. Why, Johnny? Why did it have to be Bert? You liked him, didn't you? I loved him. I loved Bert. No, he... Let's have another drink. Hey, Jan, don't you think maybe... Oh. Waiter. Waiter, two more, please. I know this is no way to face it, Johnny. It's all right, Jan. I came out here like everybody does. Every young female kid who's been told she's prettier than the rest. You know, you get the movies, Hollywood, glamour, all that stuff. Yeah, I know. But it was rough. It was too rough. And I couldn't play the game they seemed to want to play out here. And I was all set to go back to the farm country and settle down to the same dull. But then I met Bert. And instead of giving me just a lot of fast talk, he, he said he wanted to help me. And he did, Johnny. He really did. He took me into his office here in San Diego. And we made this office, Johnny. We did. And he still didn't try to make any advances because he knew I wouldn't want that. What he didn't know was that I loved him for it. That I loved him. Now he's gone. Hey, look, Chan. There's nothing we can do about it. Except try to finish the job he started on the case that... Well, that put us here drinking too much and trying not to think of him and thinking of nothing else but him. Oh, thanks, bud. Here, keep the change. 
Johnny? Yeah. You're like Bert. You're straight. I'm glad. Easy, girl. Maybe you didn't know him as well as I did. But you cared about him enough to... Well, to do this and I... Jan, Jan, take it easy. Listen, Jan. Yes? Grab your coat. I'm taking you home. I'm all right. Really, I am. You've got a double job to do tomorrow. His as well as yours. How can you talk? I know, I know. I'm out here. I'm out here to knock off the Jolly Roger. Make sure the payment of the claim is okay. At least that's why I came out here. Then how... how Now I've also got to find out who... Well... Bert. Yeah. And I'm going to need your help. All right, Johnny. Come on, Jane. Grab your coat. I took her home to her little apartment on East Drive. I didn't go up for the usual nightcap because I didn't want to. And I knew Jan didn't want me to. I dropped into police headquarters, homicide first, and then traffic detail to see if they'd been able to dig up anything on the hit-run driver who'd killed Bert. Nothing. Apparently, the threat he'd received just before the so-called accident was something that only he and Jan had known about. The expense account? Oh, I don't know... Call it ten bucks. A couple of cabs, a couple of drinks, or maybe six or eight, or... I'm kind of tired tonight. Bert was a nice guy. Jan's a nice girl. In the morning, I'll call the hotel in La Jolla and delay my reservation there another day. Meantime, I'll get some sleep, I guess. (laughs) Maybe I'll even cook me up a dream or two about skin diving and sunning on the rocks at La Jolla after all this whole rotten case is cleared up. Get myself a good winter tan to take the place of this high eastern pallor I've been trying to get. Oh. Hello. Hello. Johnny. Hello? Johnny, listen. Hello, I can't. Jan? Yes, Johnny. Listen to me. Yeah. We we must have been followed tonight. Huh? Jan? I I got a phone call just a minute ago. Yeah? A, a man. He threatened me. What do you mean he threatened you? How? Who was it? I don't know. He said, if I help you... Yeah? There'll be another accident. To me. Jan. And to you. And to you. Listen, Jan. Oh, Johnny, I'm afraid. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow? Well, it may sound corny, but where there's smoke, there's fire. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.